hello everybody and uh, happy new year. Oh, there's Willow going downstairs. Probably because I've just turned the radiators off. Oop. Better get a banister on this day. I hope you all had a pleasant Christmas and New Year break. Or are having, in fact, as of, as of today it is, in fact, New Year's Day. So, um, I thought I would give you a little, another little update. See where we are with the office. We should be pretty much there in a day or two. Um, the only thing that's been holding me up here is the light situation. Now, th this is very, very puzzling. It's, it's the case in most of the bedrooms, well, all of them. The three bedrooms, uh, the one next door being a spare room, of course, a storage area. Excuse me, I've uh, I've had a chest infection for two weeks, so I'm a bit breathless. The, the strange thing is that the lights, uh, of which there was only one in here, is right near the window. It's about two feet from the window. And I couldn't understand the reasoning for that because it leaves this whole end of the room in complete darkness. Uh, but I read up about it and it was, because uh, this house is about 55 years old, I think. And it was fashionable, and that is the original wiring. It's not the original light fitting, but it's the original wiring. And apparently it was fashionable in older houses. It was a privacy feature so that you didn't cast your silhouette against the curtains when you had the bedroom light on. So that's why the light's all over there, but it's very impractical. So what I ended up deciding to do was put a second light in. I was going. I was thinking about moving that one to the middle of the ceiling. I say that paint's a bit blotchy, but uh, I'm going to get some new paint tomorrow when the shops are open again. Uh, I was just using a an old tin of brilliant white emulsion, and it's just terrible. But yeah, I, decided, I thought, well, I move the light to the middle of the ceiling when I put a second light in. And of course, I thought what I'd be able to do is go up into the loft space. The loft being up here. Uh, hop into the loft and uh, find the junction boxes etc and run another light without too much trouble but of course this was a flat roof property initially. Felt roof, flat felt roof uh, and you would have had no access from above uh, but what I discovered is that when they put the pitched roof on in 2007 they simply laid the new joists for the pitched roof straight over the top of the felt roof uh, so the felt's actually still there so the whole ceiling is a sealed inaccessible entity so what i had to do was go in from underneath so the, the I, I figured out that the joists are two feet apart so i just drilled little access holes and ran uh, a spur off the original fitting uh, over here now what i was going to do and what i might do is running a live feed from that rose there because this was uh, this originally had a an old-fashioned junction box. Of course, the modern three-plate ceiling roses have uh, they constitute a junction box in their own right. So I took the old junction box off and wired everything into the three-plate rose. At the moment, I'm running the switched feed off the single switch across the ceiling under the joists. To the new fitting but what i could do is run the live feed off that rose over to here and then run a second cable all the way along there to a double switch here but that's going to take a little bit longer and i haven't really got time because i've got to get back into uh, a working environment here so for now uh obviously i've got to put the live fitting on here and that's right under a joist as well so it should be nice and steady I've just got to put the light fitting on, uh, put the shades back on. I might buy a fancy spotlight thing for that end one of these days. Uh, but for now it's okay. So, and I've uh, obviously I had to keep the little circular off cuts that I used, that I took out of the ceiling. That looks really bad, that paint patch. It's terrible, that paint. I'm going to have to repaint that tomorrow. I just put them back in. I just put the, the circular cutouts with uh, self-tapping screws and then filled over the top and it looks all right it'll look all right when that paint sorted out so that's that and of course it's a messy job any kind of drilling sanding filling is just spectacularly messy so obviously i'd started to set the office up when i decided to do this and i've had to put dust sheets over everything there's the the work desk as it's going to be there's component drawers there 
And the other problem is that I can't find any studs in these walls. That wall, the far wall we're looking at now behind here, that's brick. That's an external brick wall. That's an external brick wall. Now these are, but these other ones here are stud walls. All the internal walls upstairs and a few of them downstairs are just uh, stud walls. And uh, <clears throat> I used all the normal techniques, knocking magnets, etc. to try and find the studs so I can... Uh, put stuff on the wall and I can't find any. I'm going to have one more try. I'm going to drill an access hole down here at an angle and feed a cable rod along the wall till I, till I hit something. But I might not hit anything at all. I've got a funny feeling. These are strange walls and they just haven't got any upright supports which would be a bit odd. But I bought a load of fixings anyway for shelves because you can put reasonably heavy stuff in plasterboard now. And they're quite secure so there was that so this is one of the things i've been doing for the past week since since christmas basically um it was quite an intimidating job but it was wasn't as bad as i thought so and as i say there's, there's scope for improvement in the future if i want to individually switch the lights on and off and the other problem i had straight after christmas we're going to the toilet here was this shower door I noticed that it was moving at the top there. I've got to finish this. Um, they reversed the door in here before we came and they haven't bothered to paint or finish the uh, the woodwork. That's where the old latch was on the inside, you see. So it's the, which is sensible. They reversed the door. Um, the reason this towel radiator was so far back was obviously to account for the door swing. Now the door opens outwards, we don't need it there. And it impedes on the toilet, so really this towel will move forward. But that's going to have to be done later on. Oh, there's Willow again. Hello, Willow. You match the house. It's a, We've got a colour-coordinated cat. This shower door, it was loose at the top. And the other problem was, aside from the fact that the seals were all stained, um, because one of the previous occupants seemed to have a thing about fake tan. There was fake tan everywhere. Uh, the, the, dro the door had actually dropped at this end quite badly uh, and it still is actually um, and it hits the bath so this seal was torn quite bad um, so I bought a new seal for it I've rehung the door and I've actually had to shim it up at the bottom here with washers to get the door to sit properly um, and it's better than it was, but it's not perfect. So that's sort of an ongoing project. And that door weighs an absolute ton. It's obviously six millimeter thick, toughened glass. So that I just put that on again last night, and I'm just gonna see how it goes until I actually put all the sealant on it, because obviously it needs sealed up. Um, so that's that. So yeah, so whether I'm gonna buy some white paint tomorrow, finish this sealing off, put the light fittings on. Get my shelves and whatnot, an overhead light set up here, and uh, then we should be in business, hopefully. And then I'll do a proper office tour. And uh, the other thing, of course, I've took some. I didn't show you the outside of the house before. I've took some footage of the outside on the patio, and you can see uh, it's very nice. But of course, we got the flat roof done at the side. A couple of weeks ago uh, and he was a complete cowboy I think he's winding the business up he's just took his business page down on Facebook and I think if I'm gonna try and recover any money from him um, I better act quickly as you can see the uh, it's a terrible it's a messy job it's watertight at the moment but it's uh, cosmetically it's just hideous um, so that's an ongoing thing but I have to act reasonably quickly there if I'm going to try and get any money back because he's got a strike off notice uh, since the 28th of November so on the 28th of January he might actually get all of his assets seized by the Crown and then uh, there'll be absolutely no chance whatsoever of me recovering any money through small claims uh, so that's all you need and I've got to do my books as well imminently so anyway so that's where we are at the moment uh, finger isn't too bad it's sort of swelled a bit it's it's not fantastic actually but i think this is about as good as it's going to get for now 
and uh, also the old arthritis lump on the left wrist started again uh, which is nice it's not painful fortunately but it's probably because I was lifting up that shower door and sanding the ceiling at an awkward angle and stuff so I've got arthritis in my left wrist a wonky finger in my right hand but uh, we'll get there we'll get there so uh, yeah, just a quick update and uh, I will see you very soon in a regular scheduled video so bye bye for now